Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And it's PJ. And PJ back home in Phoenix, Arizona. It feels like we've been gone most of the season. Yes, sir. We started the season with a with a long road trip, so it's nice to be home. Hopefully we'll get a few games in here. Yeah, yes, yeah, so we're good good home. Good, good crowd. They're excited to see us play today. We've been doing great so far, man. We we went up against yeah. uh just got back from playing the Gold Coats. Yeah, yeah, and an offensive powerhouse team they are, but uh, yeah, they didn't fare so well against our B-Wolves. Yeah, well, now in the background here, we're showing you the, the Heaters. The Heaters are in town. Detroit Heaters will be playing today. We'll tell you a little bit about them in a minute, but first, let's go over that last game. Uh, the B-Wolves got the start again, wow. as they usually do when they win. In the top of the second, Deshaun Levon, of all people, the pitcher comes up, and he's going to hit one in the center field. Gets, uh, gets one base on it, but brings in two runners. That's a double RBI for, for the pitcher, which is which is great. Gets us out in front of two nothing. And then in the top of the fourth, uh, Fiona Clark, of all people, who hasn't been having a great offensive season, she comes up and she pops one out over the center field wall. It's a home run and puts us up 3 nothing. How about that, Pete? Yeah, uh, I mean, Fiona Clark had a big game against the Gold Coats. It was, uh, yeah, one to see that, definitely. Don't expect that kind of power from Fiona. No, don't expect any power from Fiona, <laughs> to be honest. No. Uh, Buster Biggs and follows her up, still in the same inning, top of the fourth. He's going to knock one out in the center field, bring in an RBI of his own. The Beagle's ahead by 4 nothing at that point. Uh, the Gold Coats finally get something on the board in the bottom of the fifth. It's Nielsen who's going to come up, and he grounds one of the shortstop. It's a good diving stop by uh, Slamis. He throws over to first, though, a little off balance, and Woodman's not able to pick it up. Drops the ball. They get the RBI there. But the uh, the Beagles hammer it down in the, in the top of the seventh. Clark again here, hitting one to left field, just about three feet shy of a grand slam home run. The only... The only uh, consolation to that is she brought everybody in but herself. She ends up on second. Everybody else scores three runs. Yeah, bases clearing uh, double for Fiona Clark. Yeah, she racked up, uh, what was it, uh, at least four or five, five RBIs in that game, I think. Yeah, yeah, player of the game, uh, right. followed by Deshaun Levon. It was it was a great day. And then uh, we, put Mace, we put Macy York, the closer out there, to finish things up. She goes up against Nielsen and fittingly gets a K to end the game. Beavles win seven to one, and I think we were talking about before the show. Um, just amazing that they did so well against a team that was playing so strong. Yeah, um, it was really kind of a, a battle of the titans because the Beavles they're playing pretty well as uh, themselves. That uh, first of all, being led by their pitching, uh, especially the relief pitching, both uh, Gasser Morris and Benson Rushmore. Benson Rushmore with no ERA after making five appearances. Um, Gasser Morris uh, is only given up one run and he's made six appearances. Um, the only two relief pitchers really, Case Barajas, uh, who's been out uh, due to injury, and then uh, Macy York, the closer. Uh, they, they still need to do some work on their ERA, but uh, they haven't really had much time, uh, much opportunity to pitch. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we'll have to give them some more. Maybe, maybe we'll get yeah. some time tonight. Uh, Hopefully. Again, <clears throat> I guess these heaters... Looking at the rosters, a few a few names of note. First of all, we know this woman. She's played her whole career as a B-Wolf until last season. B-Wolf's had to let her go. She spent some time on waivers, and then the Heaters picked her up. Uh, that's the second base, Gina Torrance. Uh, also backs up shorts. Uh, B-ranked, you're saying before the show, uh, 87 speed, 84 connectivity. She's a great fielder. At 36, she's making $5.4 mil uh, million a year. She's hitting 357. That's better than she ever hit for us. Yeah, yeah, she's off to a, a really good start um, with the heaters, that's for sure. Good, that's good, good for her. Um, <clears throat> then a couple, few down from there, the other player on the front lineup, Lackey Luster, comes over from the Moose, just basically changes dugouts and uh, puts the heaters jersey on Lackey, played for the Moose last two seasons. He's 28-year-old right fielder, making 5'8 a year, mostly known for his arm and his uh, speed. Uh, he looks like he's hitting 333 this season. It's also his best season. Um, so we got a couple of people who are outperforming their careers just by coming over here. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they're getting a, um, getting a second chance at it, and they want to prove that they're worth it. Yep. Uh, most of the changes are down under pitching there. Starting off, we got Jimmy Cooper comes here after playing three seasons with the Water Bullets. Uh, Cooper, the starting pitcher, 36-year-old, 4.4 million, known for his junk mostly. 
Uh, good connectivity also for a you know good hitting pitcher. Uh, he's two and one in the season. He's got a f nice four one ERA in uh, three games. He's given up seven earned runs, so he's someone to contend with. Yes, sir. Only given up two home runs so far this season, too, in in three games. So, yeah, he's been able to keep the ball in the park. He's going to be hard to hit. Got yeah. some good junk. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. It's seventy three. <laughs> Uh, Rasp Mata, a new rookie. They picked him up in the offseason, made a big move there. B-plus ranked starter slash reliever, 21, making 7-5. Also great jump, 95 jump, 79 velocity. He's going to be someone that want to develop. He's on one right now with a 7-11 ERA. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe freshman jitters. But uh, he'll be someone who'll be, in, you know, doing something in the league for a while. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, just starting out, and, uh, he, you know, he's been a little shaky so far, but he'll settle down, and he'll settle into that role pretty well. I'm telling you. Uh, and then there's a couple others, like Larry Cunningham, who, uh, you know, f finished last season with the, the Heaters. He came over from uh, from the uh, front runners. Uh, Deft Wedhams also came here for last season from the Platypi, finished the season here. Same situation, I think. Dirt. No, they're never rockers. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So that's it for that team. Um, I guess, yeah, we're looking at our schedule. I just glance at the schedule real quick here. We are on game 13. It's going to be uh, Bender Fuller. Uh, let's just go. As well, actually, we have 16 other games to tell you about. So why don't we give you those scores real quick, Pete? It starts off with the Arctics in Hawaii at the Burners. What happened? All right, they're going to let them burn. Uh, Arctics jump out to an early lead, and they're going to hold on and win 8-4. to four. Don't take a drink while you're in this. Warblers at the heaters <laughs> here, and the Warblers beat them bad, 7-4. Herbistores travel to take on the Nemesis. The Nemesis jump out to an early lead. They'll extend it and win it 5 to nothing. The Grapplers were at the Outlaws close by, uh, but it was it was a close game, too. Grapplers won it 9-8. Sirloins take it on the Jacks. The Jacks jump out to an early lead, but the Sirloins come back, but the Jacks are going to hold on and win 5-3. Nemesis at Overdogs, Nemesis 4-2. Sandcats is taking on the Philadelphia to Freedom. It's a back and forth battle, and it's going to be the Sandcats 7 4 in 10 innings. Wild picks the Gold Coast, Gold Coast 5 4. Sirloin's taking on the Moon Stars, and it's the Moon Stars 2 to 1. The Outlaws were down in San Diego with the Platypi. It's a close game at first. Platypi reach out ahead, and they stay there 9 3. The Wide Loads take it on the Water Bullets. The Water Bullets will take that 2 to nothing. The Blowfish out in Hawaii at the Burners, and it's all Burners 5 zip. Front Runners take it on the Arctics. Front runners jump out to an early lead, but the Arctics come roaring back. Front runners are going to win it seven to four in the end. Hot corners in Colorado with the Buzzards, close game for a while, right down to the end. Six five Buzzards. Crocs taking on the Warblers, and it's Crocs three, Warblers two. Michigan Moose at the Sawteeth. Sawteeth one zips, uh, low scoring All game. Right. Yes sir. <laughs> yes sir. That was a <laughs> low scoring game. <laughs> was so low, I don't even know what to do. Okay, over in the Pioneer <laughs> Conference, the Pathfinder Division, the Blowfish and the Crocodons are knotted up at the top with, with records of eight and five. Blowfish with a slight lead in the run differential with a plus three. Uh, the Burners and the Freedom both locked up in second place with uh, records of seven and six. They find themselves one game out of first place in the Burners right now with the best run differential in the Pathfinder Division with a plus 13, still find themselves a game out of first place. A lot of winning records for one division. In the Uncharted division, it's the 8-5 and five Platypi out in front with a plus-19 run differential. Uh, they've got a one-game lead against, uh, ahead of the Colorado Buzzards, who are 7-6. and six. Down in the Journey division, the Grapplers in the Arctics uh, both knotted up at fir in first place with records of 7-6. and six. Grapplers with a slight lead with a plus-4 run differential. Um, behind them, in second place, the Freebooters. With a record of five and seven, they're a game and a half out of first place with a negative 15 run differential. In our Explorer Conference in the Seafair Division, it's the Houston Jacks out in front, no big surprise. Plus 16 run differential, 10 and three, the first team to get double digit wins. Uh, they got a full game lead against the uh, second place California Goldcoats, who we just beat, who are nine and four, still with a plus 29 run differential. Yes, sir, in our very own trade division. The B Wolves, with a record of nine and three, and a run differential of plus thirty-two, have a half game lead over the Nemesis, who are nine and four. See, we're doing a lot of winning, and I'd like yeah. to start moving in some of the back backup players. Okay, but we only have a half game lead over the Nemesis. Yeah. I don't want to lose, start losing games. So the Nemesis, as I said, in second place with a record of nine and four, they have a plus eighteen run differential. Then rounding out the league, 
uh, the divisions, the sirloins and the water bullets tied for third with a record of six and seven. And then in last place, the herbivores with a record of three and nine. Yeah. Second, the herbivores second worst record in the league. Curiosity division, the San Jose Saw Teeth are in front with nine and four and plus 10. Uh, they are two games ahead of the San Diego Moonstars, who are seven and six, still winning record, uh, plus two run differential. Yeah, like I said, love to see us put a little bit more distance between the Nemesis, start to feel a little bit more uh, relaxed. But uh, really, the way the Nemesis are playing, they're hot on our heels. They are. They are just yeah. waiting for us to make a mistake. You know. Yeah, we're doing great, and there it's a surprise to find that we got someone right in our rearview mirror. Uh, tonight, yes, sir. Tonight's game, game 13 to 44, it's the four and eight heaters. This Detroit team has twice as many losses as wins. Uh, they're known as extreme speed demons, but they got a, they got a strong bullpen, good defensive rotation, so it's just it's just offensively they're having uh, trouble doing it. The Eagles, on the other hand, are doing offensively great. They're known as rotation aces. Uh, the heaters going to put their starter, their top guy on the mound, the left-hander Bishop Fuller, Bishop Fuller known mostly for his junk, but he also has really good velocity and accuracy. Fuller of this losing team has a winning record. He's two and one with a 0.93 ERA. So this is this is their best guy to, to do the job. He's got a 1.14 whip to to tie things up there. Yes, sir. And backing him up, he's got a uh, good old Spanky Wagner, the first baseman, who seems to be tense right now. Wagner has a uh, good power and uh, a little bit less than average ability to connect but he's got uh, good speed on the base fest he's only hitting 194 with no home runs slapper glued out there in left field with uh, a little bit less than average power but good ability to connect at home plate and better than average speed on the base fest he's hitting 294 with a home run and volt bolter out there in center field with good speed and better than average fielding and a good arm He's hitting a .062 with no home runs. So there, like Tommy talked about, you look at Spanky Wagnard and you look at Bolter out there in center field, you look at those batting averages and you see why the heaters are 4-8 and eight right now. Yeah, and I saw the ticker over there in the lower corner. Tish Ballin on this team, who's not even the notable player, says the best on-base percentage in the league. Yeah. So, that's kind of interesting, a team that's 4-8. Uh, we're going to be putting our best guy it's because. She gets hit by a pitch every other at bat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna be putting our best guy on the on the mound to counter the uh, the heaters. It's gonna be Hurley Bender's turn. The right-hander, no mostly for his crazy junk. He's also really accurate and above average in velocity as well. He doesn't have a record yet. He's zero and zero. He's got a four one nine ERA and a one one nine WHIP. Yeah, he's pitched some good games. Unfortunately, he just hasn't earned uh, a decision. So. Backing him up is going to be the locked-in hammer long ball in right field. He's got good power. He's got good co- ability to connect at home plate, and he's got a little bit less than average speed on the base. He's hitting 364 with five home runs. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, is also locked in. He's got better than average power, ability to connect, and, and good speed on the base. He's hitting 417 with one home run. And then Hanley Dexteras, the superstar shortstop, uh, with better than average power, good ability to connect, good speed on the base pass. He's hitting 289 with three home runs. All right. And Tish uh-huh. Balin <laughs> plays second base, I believe, for the Heater. So um, Gina Torrens is actually platooning with Tish Balin. So I'll be interested to see who we're going to see tonight. Yeah, that's true. Well, on our team, it's going to look like this. Freddie Knox comes back in the lineup to start things off and playing second base. Right behind him is going to be Hanley Dexteris playing his usual vicious in his shortstop, batting second. Batting third, the locked-in Buster Biggs, also tied for fourth for stolen bases at this point in the, in the season with four. Uh, Buster's going to be followed uh, by the cleanup man, the fourth batter, Hammerlong Ballo, also locked in. So that, that's a dangerous, dangerous combo, those two in a row. That's usually where you're getting points. Sturdy Woodman uh, is going to play first base and bat fifth. Find him, Magic Moore, in center field, batting six and batting seventh. Bertha Banks, Bertha Banks, <laughs> um, batting eighth and catching. Fiona Clark, what a after a crazy night out in Oakland in that last game. She, we hope she can continue things there. And then uh, batting ninth, our pitcher, Early Bender, he's gonna be on the mound throwing the four finger, the two finger, the cut finger, the curveball, and the slider, and whatever else he can get his hands on. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> Pete. Yes, sir. Beautiful day in Red Rock. Got the roof opened up. Got some fresh breezes blowing in. Yeah. And the heaters lineup's going to look a little something like this. They got a lot of speed over there in the heaters. Dugout. 
Slapper Glute's going to lead off playing left field. Isabel Stevens at short. Lackey Luster in right field. Jorge Duarte at catching. Gina Torrance at second base. Kawaguchi at third base. Brant at first base. Volt Bolter in center field. And Bishop Fuller on the pitcher's mound. So as the B-Wolves take the field, Slapper Glute, Isabel Stevens, and Lackey Luster are going to get ready to face off against Hurley Bender and his 4.19 ERA. Well, the speeders on the heaters. There you go. Got the red and the yellows on. Slapper Glute hitting 294 with a home run, 10 RBIs. First pitch is <laughs> driven into the stands along the third baseline. Foul ball, strike one. Hurley Bender delivers. High ball one. One ball, one strike to Slapper Glute, the heater left fielder. That's in there for called second strike. And now Slapper is behind in the count. One and two. There's a smash. Dexter's will pick it up off the one hop and make the throw to first for the first out. So one out and in steps Isabel Stevens, the shortstop. She's got power versus right-handed pitching. She's hitting 333 with a home run, four RBIs. One out and nobody on. First pitch to Stevens is in there for a called strike. Strike one. Allen's a little high ball one. One ball, one strike now to Isabel Stevens. Stevens playing shortstop for the Heaters today. Allen's fouled straight back. Stevens now behind in the count. One and two. Inside with that one. Two balls, two strikes. Bender delivers his ninth pitch. She gets enough of that to push it off foul. She'll get another pitch. Still two and two. Nobody on in the top of the first. There's a roller to Sturdy Woodman. He's going to pick it up. He's going to flip it. Oh, he's going to take it himself. And step on first in front of Isabel Stevens for the second out. Lackey Luster steps in. He's got power versus right-handed pitching. He's hitting 316 with two home runs, seven RBIs. Luster plays right field for the heaters. Takes the first pitch low. Ball one. One ball, no strikes to Lackey Luster. There's a shot. Freddie Knox is going to be able to get over there, pick it up, double pump, make the throw to Sturdy Woodman. Three up, three down. We're heading into the bottom of the first. No score. Freddie Knox, Hanley Dexterous, Buster Biggs is going to get their first look at Bishop Fuller, who's coming in with a .93 ERA. So Fuller has been able to keep the batters off balance so far this season. Freddie Knox neutral and fit, hitting .310 with a home run, seven RBIs. Well, you're going to start at the bottom of the first here. Winds up, throws it. <clears throat> Misses up high. Beals are up now. 1-0 and the count. The Freddie Knox, two quick balls. You know, Beals are doing such good offensively. They showed in this last inning how, how strong they are defensively. Foul ball third baseline now. 2-1 and one the count to Freddie Knox. Reaches down, hits a grounder to a diving... Oh! Oh, Gina Torres dives and makes the stop. But maybe it's the nerves. She can't quite pick it up. And uh, Freddie Knox is going to make first base. Yes, sir. So one on with no outs. Hanley Dextera steps in, hitting 289 with three home runs, five RBIs. <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike one. Dexter is known as a tough out utility player around the league. Takes that pitch inside, ball one. One ball, one strike down to Dexter. That one's lifted into center field. Oh. And Volt Bolter with a sliding catch to retire Dexteras And uh, what's his name? Had to get back first. <laughs> Why can I never remember his name? <laughs> Freddie Knox. <laughs> there you go, Freddie Knox. There he goes for a second. That one's high. The throw. He makes it. Knox makes the steal. All right now he's in scoring position with one out pressure up. That one low to uh, Buster Biggs. He's hitting 417. 2 0 the count to Buster. That one almost this is high. 3 0. Looks like Bishop Fuller's a little nervous throwing to him. Four pitch walk. Wow, another Beatles got one on first and second with only one out, Pete. Yes, sir. And in steps hammer long ball. Oh, he's locked in and fit. Hit 364. Five home runs, 13 RBIs on the season. One out. And runners at first and second both have speed. The first pitch is inside. Ball one. Allen comes back over the plate for a called strike. One ball, one strike to hammer long ball. Of Fuller throwing his 14th pitch for a called strike. And now long ball. <gasps> Oh, and he watches that one sail by, and Long Ballo, it goes down on strike. So two on with two outs, in comes Sturdy Woodman. Well, I think he, he thought that one was a little high. Sturdy Woodman, uh, 472, fans cheering him on. First pitch right in there for a strike. Bishop Fuller turned things around now, coming right at these batters. That one's in the dirt. 
The lead runner's gonna go to the third and get tagged out. Doggone it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna head into the top of the second. Jorge Duarte, Gina Torrens, and Kara Kawaguchi are gonna get a first look at Hurley Bender, who threw 12 pitches in the first inning. And his ERA drops to 3.98. No score. Jorge Duarte. Jorge Duarte. 13th pitch by Bender to start off the second inning. Misses outside ball 1-1-0 one, one, no account to the catcher. For the heaters, who's only hitting 147 on the season. Good contact hitter normally. Um, that one's inside. Actually, infield's going to guard the lines. In case. Number, for number 62. That would also oh, be said. Bender's on. having a hard time getting that strike. So right now, 3-0 and oh to Duarte. Watch the first minute for a strike. The safety's off. He wants to get that pitch count up. There you go. Two quick strikes now. 3-2 full count. He's known as a whiffer. But he's going to get him to throw his 18th pitch. Pops that one back off the net. Foul ball. Still 3-2. and two. No outs. Top of the second. No score. One hit by the b -Wolves. Hard foul ball towards his own dugout. Third baseline. 3-2. and two. He's making him throw 20th pitches now. Fouls another one off. He's going to he's gonna grind Bender down with a 1-4-7 batting average. <laughs> two RBIs. Number 50 thinking it over. Winds and throws. Nice breaking pitch. But it's hit on the ground to Dexterous. Who picks it up. Throws on his way to second to first. Finally gets that one down, and here comes Gina Torrens, an old favorite from town. Some fans cheering her on. They still like her here. She's quite a number. Bender sneezes something out. He's going to throw to his old teammate in just a minute here. Winds up, throws to Torrens. That one's a pie. This is ball one, one of the count. Gina Torrens in 340. A great contact hitter with a lot of speed. Oh, come on. Two quick balls to Gina. 2 and 0. Oh. Checks on that one, but it's in there for a strike. Lower part of the zone. Now we're two and one with one out. See what he comes with next. He fouls it back off the net. Got a piece of that. Moving up to a piece. 26th pitch now. Or Hurley Bender looking to get past his old teammate. Does not swing up near her hands. We got another full count. Make him throw a lot. Breaking pitch on the ground, and Gina Torrance is going to get on the first base with a single. And there's some booze and some cheers. <laughs> And that's going to bring in Kara Kawaguchi. Now we got to be careful with uh, this fast runner at first base. Kawaguchi, more of a power hitter than contact. Not great at either. This one's right in there for a strike. Oh, one of the count to Kawaguchi. Swing and a miss. Strike 2 oh, 2 the count. Kawaguchi used to play here for the Sandcats. Hard liner to right at the middle. The Magic Morris. Two quick singles. It all happens on two strikes. That's the unlike. we got to get we got to get past him before that second strike. <laughs> Give him a ground out. That's going to bring in uh, Ralph Brandt. 156 on this intense batter. Mostly power, not much contact. Runners in second, third with one out. Breaking pitch makes it in it for a strike. No swing. 0 1 to count to Ralph Brandt. The first baseman for the Detroit Heaters. Number one. The right hand batter's box. Checks on it. This is a little bit low. We're even now at one apiece here in the top of the second. Two on, one out. Swing and a miss. Strike two, one and two the count. Waiting for that double play. It's a liner to Woodman who's uh, who misses it. Holy crap. Woodman just walks right over the wall and doesn't grab it for some weird reason. And they get two runs on that, right? Just one. No, one run. Then I got runners in the corners with just the one out. We need that double play coming up. I can't believe Woodman didn't get that. He was even on his way to first. It wasn't like he was turning the other direction. It just went right under his glove. Ball, and now there's a foul ball. Third baseline, even now one apiece. Pressure up now, swing to a strike two, one and two. A strikeout or a ground to Oh, there's a, luckily foul. That wasn't, he wasn't gonna get that one either. Foul ball, first baseline, one and two. Up, oh, almost hit his bat. To try to get the foul ball a different way. Two and two now. Balls it back off the net. This two strikes always makes me nervous. 41st pitch. Come on, is man. Is a ball, and there were three and two full count. Bender's going to throw over 40 pitches by the second inning. We hope he can make it to the fifth inning. Our liner, Freddie Knox, jumps up and couldn't get it. I don't understand that. There must be a hole in his glove. They get another run. That Freddie Knox jumped up in, at the perfect height and just somehow missed it. And there's no errors, but 
It's just a matter of inches in both cases. Now we've got another runner. Flash and bunt pulls back Bishop Fuller, the pitcher. 0-1. Another, oh, what a bunt down the first base line. Bender's only going to be able to get the first out at first. Luckily that worked somehow. Now we got two down, and in comes Slapper Glute. Contact hitter. Boy, the uh, heater's looking great here today. <laughs> Getting lucky on a few of these as well. Breaking pitch misses low to the left fielder for the heater, Slapper Glute. Gets the strike to the safeties off, even one apiece. I heard the better hoping to get out of this inning. Oh my gosh, right past him in a center field. That's going to be two more runs. Wow, they're, they're lighting them up. And I, and yeah, I, Bender, Bender is not looking good. As far, I'm having a hard time getting him. He's, he's not fooling anybody he's, with anything. He's tense now. He's tense and he's closing in on 50 pitches. This did not yeah. go the, the way the Beagles wanted. Four runs in the top of the second. That one's in there for striker, even that one apiece. This is weird. This is a weird start. Two strikes now to Isabel Stevens, but this is the bad part. This is where the bad stuff happens. Fouls it back off the wall. One and two. Swing of a strike to me. Oh, gets a K. Oh, my goodness. What an inning. Holy cow. So Bender gives up four runs on five hits. We're going to head into the bottom of the second. It's Heaters four, B Wolves nothing. Sturdy Woodman, Magic Moore, and Bertha Banks can get a first look at Bishop Fuller, who threw 17 pitches, racked up a strikeout, a walk, and gave up one hit in the first inning. Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman, hitting 472 with a home run, 10 RBIs. First pitch outside, 90 miles an hour. Bishop Ford confident in 1-0. Fouls that one back off the net. Got underneath a little bit. We're even at one piece now. Eagles hoping to get back into this offense. So there's a little liner. Oh, and Isabel Stevens dive, but it's not going to be quick enough. Oh, he just beats it out. Way to hustle. Uh, Sturdy Woodman right. who gets and ekes out that single. Yes, sir. Leadoff single. Magic Moore has got good connection versus left-handed pitching. Unfortunately, he's only hitting 194 with a home run and two oh, RBIs. Yeah. First pitch to Magic Moore is high, ball one. That one's low, ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Magic Moore, the B Wolf center fielder. That one's ripped foul along the third base side. So two balls and a strike. There's a shot that's going to get up the middle in the center field on the ground for a clean single. So two on with no outs to start the bottom of the third and in steps Bertha Banks. Eagles looking to answer here quickly, Pete, putting in a lot of offense. The fans are standing up. They can feel it coming. 25th pitch by Bishop Fuller is low. 1-0 the count. Low pressure here still. Bottom of the second, 4-0 uh, flames. That one misses outside as well. There's the oh, line. No. The That's going to be a double play ball. Torrance over to Stevens back to Brandt. They get two outs. But the runners at third base now within scoring position. Yes, sir. And in steps Fiona Clark, the hero of the last game, neutral and fit, hitting 333 with a home run, five RBIs. Runner at third base with two outs. First pitch to Fiona Clark's in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's low ball one. One ball, one strike to Fiona Clark, the catcher. That one's shot oh. in the left field. Unfortunately, it's going to carry far enough for Slapper Glute to make the catch. So we're heading into the top of the third. Heaters, four runs on five hits. B Wolves, no runs on three hits. Lackey Luster, 0 for 1. Jorge Duarte, 0 for 1. And Gina Torrens, 1 for 1. Bender at 52 pitches with a strikeout and giving up five hits. His ERA's jumped up to a 5.48. Lackey Luster, neutral and fit. Hit, uh, got power versus right handed pitching. He's 0 for 1 today. Bender throwing 26 pitches in the inning. Whoop. There it's going to Freddie Knox. He's going to pick that up, make the throw to Sturdy Woodman for the first out. Lackey Luster goes 0 for 2 today. Jorge Duarte, the catcher, neutral and fit. He's known as a whiffer. He's 0 for 1 today. He's hitting 143. So with nobody on and one out in the top of the third, Duarte takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. Heaters with the lead, 4 to nothing. That's in there for a called strike. Strike two. How come I didn't get that pitch? Why, <laughs> why, why was that a ball when I threw it? He's known as a whiffer, fouls that one off, and uh, Duarte's in the hole. Oh, and two. That one's ripped foul. Same thing Duarte did in the last inning. <laughs> Just <laughs> grinding him down. Yes. Swinging him in strike three. All it's easy. right. <laughs> there you go. Make it look easy. <laughs> two outs, nobody on. Gina Torrens, the second base neutral and fit. One for one with a single. And if you recall, this is the same place the B Wolves were in the last inning. Torrance takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike one. 
Top of the third. Heaters four. B Wolves nothing. There's a shot. And Freddie Knox is going to move to his right and make the catch for the third out. So we're going to head into the bottom of the third. Heaters four. B Wolves nothing. Hurley Benders first at bat. Freddie Knox one for one. And Hanley Dexter is 0 for one. Bishop Fuller at 30 pitches with a strikeout of walk and giving up three hits. His ERA's dropped to 0.84, Tom. Ugh. Hurley Benders tense but fit, hitting 125 on the season. All right, Hurley's going for that home run pitch. Bishop Fuller winds up, throws his 31st right past the mound. He must have thrown it right down the middle. That's, yeah, he did. That's a single out in the center field. If you get a, I mean, you know, an intense pitcher, now that gives Hurley confidence. He can't throw right down the middle. No, sir. So with one on, nobody out. Freddie Knox, one for the single today. Bender with some speed over at first base. First pitch to Knox. Knox squared around like he was going to bunt, but it was low ball one. There's a shot up the middle of, on the ground into center field for another single. So we got runners at first and second now with no outs. An in steps Hanley Dexter Doing it again. Yeah, he faked him on that bunt and then swang up the middle. I think, I think, he, I think it worked. She got quite fast runners at first and second base now. Hanley Dex, who was 0 for 1 on that first one. Watch the first one there for strike. Safety off now. The Dex 0 for 1. That one low and outside, but he's not a bad, he's, he's a good hitter, so he watches that ball one, one and oh, one and one. That also low, two and one now, Bishop Fuller got a throw to him, and he does, Hanley oh, rips no. it, that's another double Come play on. ball, over to second, back to first. Two double plays in two innings, man, they're good at that. Two outs, runner at third base, Buster Biggs, locked in and fit, he walked his first time up, runner at third base with two outs, two. <laughs> Uh -huh. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's high ball one. One ball, one strike now to Buster Biggs. That's in there for called second strike. One ball, two strikes, two outs. That's going to be in the center field, and the B Wolves will get one on the board, make it four to one. Buster Biggs with a loop single in the center field, and in steps Hammer Long Ball, the right fielder. Yeah, it wasn't even a good pitch. I he probably shouldn't have swung at it. But now hammers up, Beagle's 4-1 with a runner on, fast runner, they throw over to first to get Hurley Bender, or no, I'm sorry, Buster Biggs back. He got a home run hitter, reaches down, hits that past the ground, that's gonna be another hit by the B-Wolves. They're gonna hold up though. Runner's now at first and second with just the two outs. Good way to go, Hammer. Yes, sir. Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman, neutral and fit, one for one with a single. B-Wolves starting to threaten here. Two outs, runners at first and second. Fuller throwing his 43rd pitch. Hmm. For a called strike, strike one. That's low. Allen's low ball one. One ball, one strike to Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman. That's inside ball two. Two and one now. Ball three inside as well. Three and one to Sturdy Woodman. There's a shot, and that's going to get into center field. And the uh, runner from second is coming around, and he's going to oh. score. And make it cut that lead in half, four to two. So two on with two outs, Magic Moore with connection versus left-handed pitching steps in. Championship team like the Wolves never out of it, Pete. Looking good with just two outs. No. Nope. Oh, fouled back off the wall. Lucky he fouled it, otherwise it would have been an easy pop-up. Oh, the count, 49th pitch. I feel also strike 0-2. Oh, He's in to try and close down on his 50th. Bishop Fuller tense now. Nope. And there's a little liner right in the glove of Gina Torrance. Close things out. So we're going to the top of the fourth. It's Heaters four, B Wolves two. Kara Kawaguchi one for one. Ralph Brent one for one. And Bol Bolter one for one. Bender at 60 pitches with two strikeouts, racked up five hits. His area is at a 5.24. Kara Kawaguchi one for one with a single, 317 on the season. Third base woman for the Heaters. Like I said, played for the Sandcats for a while. Now playing here, swings and misses at that, that breaking pitch. Nice slider in there by Bender. Who's looking better now? He's back to normal. Oh, one to cut. That one's on the first baseline. That's going to drift foul. 0-2. Oh, Bender's got, a, got, her, got her in a hole. And he puts her away. Strike three. I can feel that coming before the pitch even came in. Beat. Bender yes, looking sir. good now. <laughs> Ralph Brandt hit one for one with a single and an RBI. Still looking a little bit tense, though. He's got good power against right-handers, so you never know. He can go deep. He's got one home run of the season. Rips that one foul back off the wall. Oh, one to count. Here in the top of the fourth, 4-2 heaters, nursing a two-run lead, looking to add to it. Oh, that curveball drops in, somehow makes a strike zone. I don't think he liked that. 0-2 the count to Ralph Brandt. Jams him inside, good pitch, but he fouls it back, gets a piece off the wall. Still 0-2. Early Bender's ERA up at a 5-1-6 now. Swings and misses strike three. Another K for Early Bender. 
who wants to whittle that thing down. It's one thing if the team turns it around, another thing when the pitcher himself turns it around. And that brings in Volt Bolter now, one for one on the day. Fast if he gets on. Fair contact hitter, not much power. Fools him on that one, jams him inside, swing and miss, strike one. Oh, and a count. Beeble's in command at this point. Check swing, it's in there for a strike, nice slider. But he's a tough out, is Volt Bolter. Hurley Bender don't care. 70th pitch on the ground to Bertha Banks, who picks it up on her way to first one pump throw. Beeble's put him away with without much difficulty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was a turnaround there. So we're going to head into the bottom of the fourth. Heaters 4. B-Wolves 2, Bertha Banks 0 for 1, Fiona Clark 0 for 1, and Hurley Bender 1 for 1. Fuller at 50 pitches with a strike out of walk and giving him 8 hits. The ZRAs jumped up to a 1.61. Bertha Banks neutral and fit 0 for 1 today. Come on, Bertha. First pitch to Bertha Banks. Inside ball 1. One ball, no strikes. There's a shot that's going to drop in front of the left fielder. He does a tough slide. Bertha Banks does not have enough speed to test that throw, so she's going to hold up at first base. So a single for Bertha Banks, one on and no outs, Fiona Clark. Fans getting into it here, jumping up and down like a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> there's some, there's some uh, heaters fans in here. Clark swings a little bit late at that one. Oh, on the count. Uh, that one, oh, that oh, one's a high side, on. but it's a strike. Fuller goes at her for 55. Swing of a strike, three pitch strikeout. And he that puts her in her place. <laughs> Joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Hurley Bender steps in neutral and fit one for one with a single. Bertha Banks at first base with one out. That second strike was a joke. <laughs> first pitch to Hurley Bender's outside ball one. There's a roller up the middle, and it's going to be a single for Hurley Bender. I'll beat out the flow, the throw by Gina Torrance. So runners at first and second with one out, and in steps Freddie Knox. Wow, how about that? Is this guy a new guy? I don't know. Yeah. Who, who? I don't recognize him. Who? He's never on base. Knocks <laughs> two for two though. I, I should I should take that back. The uh, first one misses one and all the count. That one's right in there. Freddie Knox paints the line, but a little too far left. One and one the count now. Oh, come that's on. an easy pop up infield fly to Isabel Stevens to make that grab for the second out. Two up, two down. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not Henley Dexterous stepping in. He's tense, but fit. He's 0 for 2 today. Wow, Dexterous not having a good season so far. Two outs, two on. First pitch to Dexterous. That's going to get up into left field. Everybody will move up a base, but that's about all. And so Henley Dexterous goes 1 for 3 with a single insteps Buster Biggs. Here he comes, the man about to hit a grand slam. He's 1 for 1 with a single and a walk. RBI. He's got loaded bases, the pressure up, two outs. Bishop Fuller goes outside, or inside, one on the count. Goes outside, two, no, he's got to throw to him, though. And he knows he's a tough hitter. There it is. Hard liner to deep center field. Back off the wall. That's going to be a stand-up double bases clearing, just like that last game. The Beagles take the lead, and the place is up for grabs. Yes, sir. So with a runner at second base, two outs, hammer long ball is locked in a fit. He's one for two with a single. The speedy Buster Biggs at second base. That one's hit foul along the first baseline. Strike one. That one's high ball one. One ball, one strike to hammer long ball. I'll throw back to second, but Buster Biggs was back. One and one. That's to for called second strike. Long ball in the hole. Oh. Swing and miss, strike three. Down goes hammer long ball. Horrible. So as we head into the top of the fifth, there's been a reversal of fortune. It's the uh, B-Wolves 5, Heaters 4, Bishop Fuller's first at bat. Slapper Glute 1 for 2, Isabel Stevens 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Bender at 70 pitches with 4 strikeouts, giving up 5 hits. Bishop Fuller is tense but fit now, but he's hitting 333 on the season with an RBI. Oh, they're going to pull Bishop Fuller in the 5th. Wow, shocker. Uh, Bishop Fuller's going to take a seat. They're going to bring in Spanky Wagner, the pinch-hitting first baseman. Wagner B-ranked. Hitting 194 with no home runs, no RBIs. He's tense but fit. He does have good power, but less than average ability to make contact at home plate. And he's got good speed on the base fast. So Spanky Wagner coming in early here to pinch hit for Bishop Fuller. Swing and a miss by Spanky Wagner. No balls, one strike. Bender delivers high. One ball, one strike to Spanky Wagner. That one's outside ball two. Two balls in a strike now to Spanky Wagnard. 
There's a foul ball straight back, and that'll even the count. Two and two. Bender delivers a 75th pitch. That's pounded mm, into that's right gone. field, and that's going to be out of here. Oh, almost, <laughs> almost caught by Haverlong Ballo, but Spanky Wagner with one swing of the bat has tied it up. That traveled 372 feet in his first RBI of the season. The game is tied 5-5. Boy, we got ourselves a barn burner here. Slapper glutes the left fielder steps in. He's one for two of the single and two RBIs. Good choice of a pinch hitter. Nobody on and nobody out. Glute fouls that one off into the dugout along the first base side. That one's fouled off along the first base side as well. So quickly, Glute in the hole, 0 and 2. There's a shot. And that's oh. going to be fair, and that's going to get into the corner. Long ball is going to pick it up, make the quick throw to the cutoff man, and they won't be able to get Slapper Glute. He'll pull in the second with a double. So a runner at second with no outs. Isabel Stevens tense but fit. I didn't see what she did earlier. She's got power versus right-handed pitching. First pitch to Stevens is outside, ball one. Allen's ripped foul into the stands along the first base side. One ball, one strike. Fooled her completely. She swung right through it. So one ball, two strikes to Isabel Stevens. Bender throwing his 82nd pitch inside, ball two. That'll even the count up, two and two. There's a shot. Dexteris is going to make the catch on the fly. And he'll chase Slapper Gloop back to second. Lackey Luster steps in. He's 0 for 2 today. One out, one on. Lackey Luster with power versus right-handed pitching. He's going to foul that one off along the first base side. Strike one. That one's outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. Bender steps off the rubber and Slapper glued his back to the bag at second. Allen's high ball two. Two balls and one strike to Lackey Luster. Allen's fouled back. That'll even the count. Two and two. 88th pitch for Hurley Bender in the fifth. And that's going to be a rocket right to, um, oops, right to. Bertha Banks, who caught it on the fly, uh, Slapper Glute had to get back to second. Bertha Banks made a throw to first for some reason, but <laughs> two outs, runner at second base. And in steps Jorge Duarte. Duarte 0 for 2, I think, today. Fouled that one off. That's a roller to Freddie Knox. He's going to pick it up, make the throw to Sturdy Women for the third out. So Spanky Wagnard. With the home run ties the game up, they're going to let him take a seat. They're going to bring in Der Neverwalker, the superstar relief pitcher. Der Neverwalker with a .69 ERA, a 1.31 whip, 15 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He's got good velocity, good junk, and better than average accuracy. He's almost fully rested. He's known as a composed pitcher. He throws a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. So as we head into the bottom of the, th the fifth, the score is tied 5-5. Five, five. Sturdy Woodman, two for two. Magic Moore, one for two. And Bertha Banks, one for two. And they're never Walker taking the bump with that .69 ERA. We got ourselves a barn burner, folks. <laughs> Sturdy Woodman locked in and fit two for two with two singles and an RBI. Never Walker's the real deal. Winds up, throws his first pitch. Ooh. A lot of movement on it. It's fouled third base line. It's going to drift over the wall. Kawaguchi. Went for it, couldn't quite pick it in. Composed Neverwalker. Fans cheering now. That one misses just high. We're going to want a piece now. Neverwalker, oh. another foul ball, third baseline. That's going to be a souvenir. Another souvenir. Third baseline, one and two. He's got him in a hole. Oh, he does not go high and inside. Two apiece now. Fifth pitch by Neverwalker. Breaking pitch also misses. Full count, three and two. Makes an adjustment, winds up, throws. Reaches out, hits one on the ground to Kawaguchi. A third one, pump throw to first. One down. Magic Moore. The center fielder neutral and fit one for two of the single today. Nobody out with one out. <laughs> First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's low ball one. One ball, one strike. That's inside ball two. Two balls and a strike to Magic Moore. That catches the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes, one out. That one's popped up in the shallow right left center field. And Isabel Stevens, the shortstop, ranges out and makes the catch for the second out. Two up, two down, and in steps Bertha, Bertha Banks. 
Quite a game, quite a game so far. Bertha Banks one for two, fans cheering her on. Eagles hoping to recapture that lead. That first one's low. One of the count. Pressure up now. Hard liner to, to center field. It's going back to the wall. Bolt Bolter's going to grab it. She's going to slide into second and just make it. Says hello to her old teammate, uh, uh, Gina Torrens. So a two out double for Bertha Banks. Fiona Clark steps in. Clark hitting 304. First pitch to Clark is in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's lifted into right field. The right fielder's calling everybody off. at Lackey catch for the third out. So we're going to head into the top of the sixth. Uh, score all knotted up at 5-5. Gina Torrance, one for two. Carrick Kawaguchi, one for two with a strikeout. Ralph Brent, one for two with a strikeout. Harley Bender at 90 pitches with four strikeouts, giving up seven hits. ZRA's jumped up to a 5.18. Gina Torrance, neutral and Fitch. He'll step into the box. Gina Torrance, one for two on the day. Still trying to sell her home here in Phoenix. <laughs> Waiting for her first pitch from Bender. His 91st but goes right out of the strike. Only the count. Safety off now. Pressure up. Because uh, anything here. Ty gets, uh, Gina Torrance said a couple home runs with us. But she's quickly in a hole 0-2. No swing yet. Gina Torrance. That one low down her near knees. Misses. Ball one. 1-2 one the count. Check swing on that breaking pitch. Misses outside. Reva now two apiece. Bender losing a little of his velocity. 95th pitch. Hard liner to Hadley Dex, who dives to his left, throws it, but Gina Torrens is fast. She beats out the run and makes a clean single. Clark Kawaguchi now one for two with a single and a fast runner at first base. The pressure up. Bender also losing accuracy here in the top of the sixth. Decide to let him go. That one goes up high, misses ball one, one will count. She does not run. He's also got a got to catch him with a strong arm at the plate, so that helps. Two quick balls to Kawaguchi. Three quick balls to Kawaguchi. He's looking to put her on first and four pitches. Can he do it? Oh, crap. Oh, she shows bunt, but comes back three and one now to count. Oh, it's a hard hit to right center field going back deep. Oh, and it's off the ground. Moore picks it up. She's going to make her way around to third base and bring in Gina Torrens. And the uh, Peters take the lead one more time. Now it's um, Ralph Brandt, who's one for two on the day. Hurley Bender struggling now. He's tense. And it looks like they're going to give him the towel and give him relief here in the top of the six after giving up that that tie. He got a fast run at third base with no outs. So whoever they tap, which looks like Benson Rushmore's got his work cut out for him. They bring the ace, no ERA, and a 0 0.31 whip. Pete was talking about it before the game. He's just doing out of his head. 10 Ks on the season, mostly rested. Throws a four-finger, two-finger, a slider, and a curveball. And like I said, he's got his work cut out with a fast runner at third base and no outs. And the pressure up. The um, heaters looking to add to their lead. Goes right in with a split finger. Strike 101, no swing. To Ralph Brandt. Reaches down and hits that one at first base. He's not going to be able to get torn, so he steps over at first for the out. And it's now seven, right? Seven to five. Peters, one out. None on. At least they got the bases cleared. Checks in the first one. Strike one and one the count to Volt Bolter. Who's up, by the way? <laughs> Contact hitter. Foul ball, first base line. Benson Rushmore's got a good, good spot. Benson Rushmore still haven't, haven't given up a hit, even though they got the one run. Fouls it back towards his own dugout. 0-2. Oh Looking at this next one here. Are the sturdy wooden jumps up and cannot get it. That's going to be extra bases. Longballo picking it up goes to the cutoff. Going to slide in the second for a double. And the heaters turning things back on here again. They want this win against the best team in the league. Now it's yeah, for a, a poor offensive team, they don't. They seem to be able to hit this really good pitching team very well. Yeah, they're never Walker you know. hitting 500 on the season. Flashes bunt. Twice that time it's a strike, a ball and a strike. Fast runner at second base. Flash oh bunt. come on! This is outside two and one. The count now. They're never Walker. That's Rushmore's tenth pitch. Went right down to the base. They're going to have to get the runner at first. Does that run? He's just, Volt Bolter, aptly named, was four steps from third when when Rushmore picked it up. Now it's slapper glute. They just need one more though. 
I gotta get Glute out here though. Checks the first one strike one on one of the count. The K would be nice right about now. Doesn't pitch by Rushmore. Line or third base foul ball and two. Can they do it? They haven't thrown many Ks today. That one up and inside misses ball one, one and two the count to slap her glute. Liner out of Woodman, but that's gonna be the same thing. He's gonna pick it up and run it down to cancel things out. Yeah, but the heaters pick up two more. So as we head into the bottom of the six, heaters seven runs on 10, ten hits. B Wolves five runs on 13. Benson Rushmore's first at bat. Freddie Knox two for three and Hanley Dexter is one for three. Dernever Walker with 15 pitches. Giving up one hit. Benson Rushmore is neutral and fit hitting 333 with a home run and an RBI. And he is up now. And there's the pitch. <clears throat> and there for a strike. Nice breaking pitch. Oh, on the count. High pitch, but it's hit deep. Deep to center field. It's going back to the wall, but caught. Just at the wall of Oval. A nice hit by Benson Rushmore. Too bad he hit it to the deepest part of the park. Yes, sir. Freddie Knox, two for three with two singles. One out, uh, one out, nobody on. Knox takes the first pitch inside, ball one. Allen catches the outside corner for called strike. One ball, one strike. One out. That one's low, ball two, two and one. That one's low as well, ball three. Three balls and one strike. They're never walker known as a composed pitcher. A line drive into left field for a single for... Freddie Knox, so with one on and one out, in steps Hanley Dexterous. Hanley could tie things up here. He's got three home runs. He's a little short. He could use his fourth. Fans standing up. They want it. They're calling it. He looks at first base, throws to Hanley. It's on the ground. Dina Torrance is able to knock it down, but she can't pick it up. That's the second time she's had that misfortune. And it's a nice single. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two on with one out. Buster Biggs locked in and fit. Two for two with a double, a single, a walk. He's got four RBIs today. So with one out and two on. Oh, no. He's going to lift that one over to second, but they cannot get the uh, relay to first, so uh, they get Hanley to second, but runners at first and third with two outs. Hammer Long Ballo steps in. Hammer could do it. Fans standing up cheering. Goes to first. Does not. He gets uh, bigs in the dirt. Oh, and, or, no, it, uh, there's the ball. One no the count now to... Hammer long ball, that one's high, ball two. Who know? There he goes for second base. It's a hit and run, and that's gonna be a, a clean single. They're gonna bring in the one run, Pete, and the Beagles with two outs, get another one with one run of tying it. Yes, sir, 7-6, 30 Woodman, the first baseman. He's neutral and fit two for three with two singles and an RBI. Runners at first and second. That runner at second base with speed. Woodman hits that one foul along the first baseline. Strike one. Allen's low ball one. One ball, one strike to Sturdy Woodman. There's a shot. That's going to be on the ground to Isabel Stevens. She'll pick it up, make the throw to Ralph Brandt at first base for the third out. So as we head into the top of the seventh, Heater seven, B Wolf six, Isabel Stevens 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Lackey Luster 0 for 3, and Jorge Duarte 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Rushmore threw 14 pitches and gave up one hit. Isabel Stevens tense, but fits. She's got power versus right handed pitching, but she's 0 for 3 today. She is. Rushmore with 10 Ks on the season. First pitch to Stevens is in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's high ball one. One ball, one strike to Isabel Stevens. The heater shortstop. Swing and a miss, strike two. And now Isabel Stevens finds herself behind in the count. One and two. Rushmore delivers. Swing and a miss, strike three. Down goes Isabel Stevens. And Rushmore starting to get it going here. One out, nobody on. Lackey Luster, the right fielder, neutral and fit. He's got power versus right-handed pitching. He's 0 for 3 today, though. Rushmore delivers. There's a roller to Sturdy Woodman. He'll pick it up, make this, make the walk over to first step on the bag for the second out. Two up, two down. In steps Jorge Duarte, the catcher. He's neutral and fit, known as a whiffer. He also is 0 for 3. This is uh, part of the lineup that has really struggled, I guess, for the heaters today. Duarte takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. Duarte hitting 135 on the season. Allen's inside ball one. One ball, one strike. While he didn't get anything off of uh, Bender, he did take Bender to the mat a couple of times. And Rushmore went right at him. Allen's a called second strike. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Duarte a, a whiffer. He's going to roll that one to Hanley Dexterra as it's short. Dexterra's going to pick it up. 
double pump make the throw to Sturgeon Woodman for the third out. So as we head into the bottom of the seventh, scores Teeter seven, B Wolf six, Magic Moore one for three, Bertha Banks two for three with a double, and Fiona Clark 0 for three with a strikeout. Their Never Walker at 30 pitches has given up four hits. His ERA is at a 1.2. Magic Moore neutral and fit. He's one for three with a single today. All right, Magic, let's do things here. First pitch by Never Walker breaks ah. back in there. Fouled off third base line, don't want to count. Pressure up. No, There's Pete, a liner. No. Gina Torres picks it up on her way to first, makes the play. One up, one down. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to swing at everything, Pete. <laughs> Bertha Banks is two for three with a double and a single. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> one out, nobody on. Bertha Banks with a line drive into center field. That's the way to do it, Bertha. She's going <laughs> to hit the first with a clean single. So one on with one out and in steps. Fiona Clark, neutral and fit. Pressure creeping up even more. Fiona Clark 0 for 3. Not the day she had uh, last night in Oakland. Uh, Neverwalker goes low on that one. Misses ball 1-1 one, one to the count. 35th pitch by Neverwalker. No. That's one of those easy little catch. Get it. Well, St Stevens has to run back, though, in the left field to get that. Benson Rushmore, the relief pitcher, 0 for 1 today. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs with a runner at first base. Bertha Banks. First pitch is in there for called strike, strike one. Oh, that one's pounded. Unfortunately, he got around a little quick and pushed it foul. That one's popped up into right center field in the center there. And Bo Poulter will make the catch for the third out. So we're heading into the top of the eighth. It's uh, heater seven, B Wolf six, Gina Torrance two for three, Kara Kawaguchi two for three with a triple and a strikeout, and Ralph Brandt one for three. Rushmore at 23 pitches with a strikeout and giving up one hit. Gina, Gina, Gina Torrance, go, go ahead. Oh, uh, it's okay. She's two for three with two singles. Having a good good day here at her old home park. Got some family in town watching her here. <laughs> Gina, ooh, watch that first one there for a strike. I want to count safety off. Pressure up starting in the top of the eighth. The heaters hoping to add to their lead. Torrance watches two quick strikes, hit to swing the bat. 0 oh, 2. Benson Rushmore knows how to throw to her and throws 26 pitch right here. This is a pie. Good patience by Torrance. 1 and 2 the count. The old B Wolf reaches down, hits one on the ground to Woodman. He's going to pick that up, take two steps to his left, and get his old teammate out. And that's going to bring in the second batter, Carl Kawaguchi, third base woman for the Heaters. Two for three with a triple, a single, a 326 average. So you can expect her. To get on base right here. Pressure still up. One out. Top of the eighth. Seven six heaters. Instead, she hits a home run ball. Luckily, that's going to drift just foul. Wow. About ten rows back. Kalaguchi showing him she means business. That one misses inside. Ball one. One and one to count now. Benson Rushmore going to throw number thirty. Number forty four throwing number thirty to number six. Reaches out, fouls it back off the net. Almost hits your batter on deck. One and two to count now to Kalaguchi. Swing it with strike three. Nice K on a ranking pitch. He tells her to go out of his seat. He's looking confident. That's going to bring in the tense Ralph Brandt. One for three with a single and two RBIs, though. He's got power against these right-handers. He can go deep and put another one on. That's where Rushmore goes low and away. Misses. Ball one. One of the count. 33rd pitch. A locked in Rushmore. Falls back up the net. Or even now one, two. Oh, no, I'm sorry. One apiece. Falls that back off the wall. Now it's one and two. A little ahead of myself. Prescient there. 35th pitch. Look at him at strike three. Ends it with another K. Way to go, Benson Rushmore. Yes, sir. So we're going into the bottom of the eighth. Score is still heater seven. B Wolf six. Freddie Knox three for Hanley. Next there is two for four. And Buster Briggs two for three with a double and a walk. They're never working at 38 pitches. Good up five hits. His ERA is at a 1.12. Freddie Knox neutral and fit. Three for four with three singles. Never noticed the derby dancers across the street in left field until now. First with a break pitch in for a strike. Losing some velocity after his 40th pitch. Strike two. He's got Freddie Knox in a deep hole. Puts water on him. Three pitch strikeout. Wow. Never walked it. Looking good. <laughs> and the next there is neutral and fit two for four with two singles. They're going to pull their never walker. And they're going to bring in Layla Buckberger, the B-minus closing pitcher. Buckberger with a 24 ERA, 3.67 whip, six strikeouts. She's neutral and fit. She's got less than average velocity. She's got good junk, and she's got less than average accuracy. She's fully rested. She's known as a K-dud. She throws a four-seam fastball and a curveball. So Hanley Dexter is... 
takes the first pitch outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. That one's low ball, two. Two balls and no strikes. One out, nobody on. That catches the outside corner for a called strike. Strike one. That one's hit foul into the stands along the third baseline. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Layla Buckbucker known as a tough out. I mean, a, a K-dud. And Haley Dexteris drops that one into left center. Oh. Oh, Holter is going to have a problem picking it up. Mm -hmm. Haley Dexteris was going to try and tempt fate, but he turned, decided to turn around and stop at second. So He got a fast runner at second base, and he got Buster Biggs, who's two for three with a double and a walk. There's only one out. That one's high. Misses ball one, one of the count. Layla Buckberger throws her seventh pitch, also high. Looking a little nervous to throw to Buster Biggs. He's hit 431 in the season. That one skips off the ground. Good cricket pitch. 3-0 now. Pressure way up. There it is. Oh, it's a four-pitch walk. Buckberger did not want to throw to that man. And now the pressure through the roof. Here comes Amber Longballo. Yes. yes, sir. Runners at first and second with one out. Buck, uh, Longballo. Bucky Longballo. That's going to be a line drive into center field. Bolter will make the catch for the second out. So, two outs. And in steps Sturdy Woodman, who's two for four with two singles. Pressure through the roof again, two for four, two singles, two outs. Fans in their feet, a home run hitter at the plate. Two on, misses, does Layla Buckberger. One other count to, to, oh, late swing into center field. They're gonna bring the, the lead runner around and they're gonna tie up the game, Pete. Way to go, Sturdy. All right, so with two on and two outs, Magic Boy, the center fielder, steps in, he's neutral and fit. He's one for four with a single. Buckberger delivers inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. There's a shot up the middle into center field. And we're going to try and score from second oh. base, and they're going to do it. And the B-Wolves take the lead, 8-7. Bertha Bank steps in. She's neutral and fit. Two outs, runners at first and second. Wow, if the catcher would have caught that. Now, now Layla Buckberger losing some accuracy. Hard liner past the mound. The Beewolves are just, just racking up. They're going to get another runner out, but this one's going to get caught running in. Yep, it's 30 women. It's not that fast. No, sir, but the Beewolves put two more on the board. We're going to head into the top of the ninth. Peters, seven runs on 10 hits. Beewolves, eight runs on 21 hits. Volt Bolter, two for three with a double. Layla Buckberger's first at bat. Slapper Goot, two for four with a double. Volt Bolter, neutral and fit, known as a tough out. He's two for three with a double, a single, and an RBI today. They're going to pull him for some reason. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but, you know, he's having a great day. I know he's only hitting 158, but. Cat McCarthy. Uh, they're going to bring in the pinch hitting second baseman, Cat McCarthy. She's hitting 158. <laughs> With no home runs and no RBIs. She's neutral and fit. She's got about average power, less than average ability to connect, poor speed. She's got power versus left-handed pitching, and she favors the high pitch. So the ninth inning, here we go. The first pitch is a roller. Fair. Fiona Clark's going to pick it up. A swing, uh, swinging bunt. Fiona Clark picks it up, makes the throw to first for the first out. Layla Buckberger comes in. She's tense but fit. I was going to say, I don't think she's going to hit. And they're going to sit her, and in comes the uh, the Tish Ballin. You know, we've heard a lot about her. Tish Ballin, the center fielder, she's hitting 486 with a home run, five RBIs, neutral and fit. She's got less than average power, poor contact, and uh, better than average speed on the base pass. So with one out and nobody on, in steps Tish Balin. Benson Rushmore delivers low ball one. Rushmore throwing his 38th pitch here. And there for called strike. So the count is even. One ball, one strike, one out to Tish Balin. The heater, pinch hitter. That one's in there for called second strike. And now Balin behind the count. One and two. That one's fouled off straight back. And Balin will get another another pitch. One ball, two strikes. That one's popped up in this foul territory. And that's going to drift out of play. One ball, two strikes, one out. Benson Rushmore at 41 pitches. His velocity and stamina are starting to take a shot there. There's a deep drive into center field. Magic Moore is there and makes the catch for the second out. So two outs. And in steps Slapper Glue at the left fielder. He's neutral of it. Two for four, a double, a single, and two RBIs. Mm. And we are here close to the end. If the B-Wolves can get this out... They'll take the game. Benson Rushmore is going to take a seat. They're going to bring in Macy York, the closing pitcher. She's got a 6.75 ERA, a 3.0 whip. 
three strikeouts. She's neutral in pitch. She's got about average velocity, less than average junk, and average accuracy. She's not fully rested, but she's got a throws a four seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. So two outs, top of the ninth. Macy York delivers the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike one. That one's ripped foul and very quickly slapped her glute now in the hole. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Macy York delivers. Oh, low ball one. One and two now. That one's fouled off straight back. Slapper glute making New York throw some pitches. Oh, inside. And your glute looked like he wanted to offer at it, was able to hold up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Fouled straight back. And Glute will get another pitch. Macy York at her sixth pitch. Outside ball three. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Swing and a miss. And it's a drop third strike. But Fiona Clark will make the throw to first. And the B-Wolves will win the game, Tom. Wow. A hard-fought battle against a team that probably shouldn't have been able to hang in that well. But boy, the pitching was not, uh, until we got to the relief pitching, the pitching was not sharp. Just uh, Hurley Bender did not look good at all. Well, yeah, it was, I, I can't believe they came back. It, all offense, look at that. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> the heaters come out strong to start. They get four runs in the second. Beebles make it interesting by getting two in the third. They get three more than in the fourth to take the lead. The heaters tie things up in the fifth. And then they jump back ahead in the six by two runs. B Wolves right away, bottom of the six, uh, get one more. And then they tie it in the eighth and go ahead with two runs. Yeah. Uh, the Heaters get seven runs on 10 hits. The B Wolves, eight runs on 21 hits. Wow. Yeah. Slapper Glute goes uh, two for five on the day, two RBIs with a strikeout. It was a good day for Slapper. Uh, Stevens, on the other hand, goes 0 for four, two Ks. Lackey Luster 0 for 4. Jorge Duarte 0 for 4 with a strikeout. That that part of the lineup doing absolutely nothing, I think, is what might have been the difference. Gina Torres, yeah. our old friend who I didn't want to get rid of, <laughs> goes 2 for 4 with two runs, 353. Good good day for Gina. Uh, Kara Kawaguchi, 2 for 4 with two runs and an RBI, two strikeouts. She did a little of everything. Good day for her as well. Ralph Grant goes 1 for 1 with a, with a run and two RBIs. With two strikeouts, another another essentially good day. Volt Bolter, two for three, does well with a run and an RBI. Uh, Kat McCarthy then comes in, goes 0 for 1 on a sub. Bishop Fuller doesn't hit. Spanky Wagner comes in, does a great job, pinch hitting. He goes 1 for 1 with a run and an RBI, a home run. He hits it over the wall on a pinch hit. Well, it's, that's the way to do it. Dernever yeah. Dernever Walker does not hit. Uh, Layla, Layla Buckberger does not hit. And Tish Ballin, who's lighten things up goes over one her, her average is still at a 474 though what a what a what a player yes sir and over there for the b wolves um freddie knox goes three for four scores a run he did strike out once Henley dexter is three for four scores two runs uh buster biggs goes two for three scored two runs he racked up four rbis and walked twice uh hammer long ballo two for five uh with an rbi uh, long ballo struck out twice today Sturdy Woodman goes three for five, cracks up two RBIs. Uh, Magic Moore, two for five with an RBI. Um, we wind up with Bertha Banks, four for five, Tommy, wow. with a wow. run. Yeah, what a day for Bertha Banks. That might have been the difference. I mean, Bertha's usually kind yeah. of quiet. Yeah, she seems to be waking up. Her bat seems to be waking up a little bit here. Uh, Fiona Clark coming off that hot game against the Gold Coats goes 0 for 4 with a strikeout. So she did not have a good, good day mm. at the plate. Uh, Hurley Bender did. He goes two for two, <laughs> scores two runs. <laughs> uh, Benson Rushmore, unfortunately, 0 for two, although his first time at bat, it looked like he might have, uh, you know, he was a biscuit shy of another home run. Yeah. Macy York doesn't get an official at bat. so. Well, And Benson also pulled a foul ball that would have been, if he straightened it out, would have been a home run. <laughs> yeah. Pitching, uh, Bishop Fuller comes in, throws four, get this, four innings, gives it 12 hits. Five earned runs, walks a batter, gets three Ks. Not his best outing. Even with that horrible performance, his ERA is a 2.7, and he's got a 2 on record. Their Never Walker comes in, throws uh, three and a third innings, gets a five hits, one earned run, 1K. He's at a 1-1 ERA. 
1.1 ERA, no record. Uh, Layla Buckberger comes in and gets the loss. Those two thirds of an inning gives up four hits and two earned runs. Uh, walks a batter. Her ERA, ugh, 24.3. She's 0 1 and 1 on the season now. Yeah, I think if the heaters can find themselves a halfway decent closer, I think they'll start turning it around. But Buckberger does not seem to be the right person for that role. And I'm proud of the fact that both Fuller and Neverwalker came in with ERAs below one. Oh. So the fact that they're leaving with, you know, Fuller's leaving with a 2.7. I think he, I think uh, if we'd have to go back and watch the tape, but I think he st- was it coming in with a .86 or something, you yeah. know? So, yeah. And Neverwalker, too, he came in with a with an ERA below one. So uh, I'm happy for that. Hurley Bender uh, over there for the B-Wolves. Hurley Bender pitched five innings, gave up nine hits, seven earned runs. He did rack up four strikeouts, but he gave up one home run. Uh, his is going to leave with an ERA of 5.92. Still no record on the season. He, uh, yeah, this one, this one's on him though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Benson Rushmore, he'll get credit for the win. He pitched three and two thirds innings. He only gave up one hit. He struck out three. He still has no ERA, but his record will improve to three wins and one save. Wow. Macy York, Macy York will get the save. She pitched a third of an inning, got the strikeout. Uh, her ERA drops to six, and her record will remain no wins, one loss, and two saves. Way no, to, her, she, her record improves yeah. to two saves. <laughs> Way to pitch it, B-Wolves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, three stars in the game. First star, Buster Biggs, of course, the left fielder. Good old number 39. He was two for three with a double, four RBIs, and scored two runs himself. It's hard to believe the second star of the game, the b minus ranked third base, uh, number 16, Bertha Banks would get second star for these stats. Four for five with a double and a run. Yes, sir. And then rounding out the three stars, the B-ranked Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman, three for five with two RBIs. Yes. Gamer stats. Tommy G had 11 hits, no home runs, racked up three RBIs, got a great catch, a stolen base, three strikeouts for a contribution of 49%. Pete J had 10 hits, no home runs, five RBIs, five strikeouts, and a contribution of 51%. Nice. Good, good even contribution. <laughs> well, was... wow, I, I, almost, I almost kind of feel bad for the heaters there. You know, a team with a 4-8 and eight record playing so solid to start and then getting the yeah. win, getting the lead back a couple times, but just, yeah. couldn't, just couldn't do it. That's was... that was... that a good game. It's yeah. Back and forth, like I said. And sturdy just leapfrog Tish Balin for the best uh, for the best uh, batting average in the league. That's the way it should be. <laughs> sturdy Woodman now on the list uh, makes the the list for the top ten players in the current season. He's number ten. Oh wow! He's got a 480, 483 batting average, a six thirty eight slugging percentage, a one point one six two on base percentage. One home run, 12 RBIs, and five walks. Yeah. Yeah, nice, nicey, nice. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, a news here uh, in the league. Uh-oh. So I will start it off uh, just saying that uh, player development available just for bros, birth and banks, as we're going to take on a new training regime. Um, $634,000 could get her, could add two to her power, one to her speed, and two to her fielding with a, a small chance of adding some more to her power and speed. And make her a utility player. So that's a good thing. But I don't think uh, we can't afford anything except for Hammer Long Ball or Red Meat Diet. Which would lose connectivity and speed. But give 8 or 16 to his arm. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Alright, alright. So going back to the other development. What do you got there, Pete? I got Snag Roper uh, got into it with a wild pig coach uh, in the last game, and he was replaced by Guadalupe Pennington. So they're going to let uh, Snag Roper just uh, just leave the team. And uh, he was making seven million five hundred thousand dollars. He was a thirty-three year old shortstop. They're going to bring in Guadalupe Pennington. She's a B plus. Um, they're going to get a, 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 a more power out of her, a l- less uh, a, less contact, uh, more speed, and less fielding. Um, but she's also a utility player, so she can play a little bit more. She's 36 years old, three years older than Snag Roper. 
but she plays shortstop infield outfield so she's a pretty good um you know utility player to have on the bench you can plug her in anywhere and they'll save some money she's only going to make six million seven hundred thousand dollars yeah and at 36 she may just end her career out there in new york yeah and then yeah hammer ball along while the red meat diet yeah so that's uh schedule yeah we got a little bit of a homestand this is nice we're gonna be we're gonna be home for this next one as well playing the the cross cross stadium classic the Beavles and the sandcats yes sir be be beavis ortiz against uh Carus. yeah ansel Carus. ansel Carus. oh my that's that's big at least at the beginning of the season it was that was a big pickup but we'll see how he's doing so we either whatever happens phoenix is winning this game <laughs> yeah you'll tune in for it and uh, you'll get to see a phoenix win yeah and so Caru bruce is simply he is oh, let's see what his stats are he's 0-1 on the season he's got a 6.06 era he's uh, given up 11 runs uh he's pitched in three games um 16 innings hmm Giving up 15 hits, 13 strikeouts though, six walks. He's given up three home runs. So, how about that? Not, not, yeah, not a horrible start by yeah. any stretch, but probably not the stop the start he was hoping for. No sir. All right. Well, maybe we'll close things up there here, and we'll prepare for that next game. That's going to be a fun one. That home one's always a good time against the, the Sand Cats. Uh, what until then? This has been it's been another wow. What a what a win, Pete. And um, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, it was a very good win. Yeah, it was exciting. It was a good one, though. Back and forth battle all the way. Um, even at the end there when you had uh, Slapper Glute going against Macy York. Macy York hasn't pitched in a while. I mean, we did get her a, a little action game, but, um, you know, she didn't know how she would do. And Slapper Glute was having a pretty good game this, this today. So, yes. yeah, it was still up in the air. <laughs> it was, it was. Well, the Beavles take the win, and we'll leave it with that. And then until we see you next time here, it was great. This is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And we are saying, get out of here.